Life's Top Ten list from two perspectives. I'm Danielle kuglin Assistant Director for Orientation and First Year Experience here at NIU. And tonight's event was inspired by NIU's 2009 Common Reading Experience selection, The Last Lecture. This book is by Randy Posh and Jeffrey Zanilow. Randy Posh was a faculty member at Carnegie Mellon University and was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2006 and presented his last lecture at Carnegie Mellon on September 18, 2007. Randy's upbeat attitude and life lessons are chronicled in his book, which has become a worldwide bestseller. A common reading experience has been piloted at Northern Illinois University for two years now, incorporating the UNIV courses and now a wider campus and community base here tonight. Our venture for this evening was to find someone who could provide a lecture for a campus with the same upbeat attitude and life lessons that Randy was able to address. Well, we found not just one, but two presenters this evening, a father and son team, David and Kevin Valentine. Professor David Valentine has been teaching chemistry at Northern Illinois University for 20 years. He currently serves as Director of Undergraduate Studies in Chemistry and Biochemistry, is a faculty advisor for the NIU Chemistry Club, and has received an Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching Award. Kevin Valentine is a 2007 DeKalb High School graduate, a current NIU student, and a cancer survivor. Kevin has been an inspirational figure to many during his battle with leukemia. Many have followed Kevin on his blog, The Uphill March, Confessions of a Leukemic Optimistic. Please help me welcome Dr. David Valentine and Kevin Valentine in life's top 10 list from two perspectives. I'd like to thank you all for coming here and listening to us tonight and giving me an opportunity to, to share all these things that I have learned in the past nine months. Uh, who am I? Like she said, my name is Kevin Valentine. I am a 20, 21 year old and it feels amazing to say this, I am a cancer survivor. And nine months ago I was diagnosed with leukemia, uh, acute myelogenous, a myelogenous leukemia, that's a mouthful. Um, and that sent me through, well, let's see, in the past nine months I have spent over 60 days in the hospital and have had probably three gallons, four gallons worth of blood drawn at least. Uh, I've, I had a bone marrow transplant on June 12th and I have learned more about leukemia and cancer than I have ever wanted to care to know. But apart from that, I've learned more about myself and more about what matters in life. And I would like to share that with you, with you here tonight. Why am I here tonight? We live life in an uncertain world. You don't know what's going to happen for the rest of tonight. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And you don't know when you're going to die. I had a doctor look me in the eye and said there was a 50% chance of me being alive in five years. That really makes you reconsider. What am I doing with my life? And what am I leaving behind? Uh, there's a, a James Dean quote I would like to start off with. Dream as if you live to lever. Excuse me. Dream as if you'll live forever, but live as if you'll die today. You could walk out that door tomorrow, and that could be the last day you live on this earth. And what matters is what you leave behind. For better or for worse, what I've been through has changed me, and I would like to share that experience with you. And now I'd like to introduce the old fart who's partially responsible for the <laughs> quiet. <laughs> Yeah, I've been called worse than an old fart. Probably by me. Well, well <laughs> for an old man. I have my other son, Kirby, in the front row, calls me all kinds of stuff. Usually starting with old. Um, what I'd like to do tonight is to share with you my perspective of what Kevin's been through, not just Kevin, but our whole family in the last nine months. We have learned so much, not just about our relationship, but about our community which has been an extremely uplifting experience. Uh, in preparing for this, one of the things that Kevin and I did, in fact, we did it last night at about 10 o'clock, was we actually looked at Stephen Posh's video. Randy Posh. Uh, hmm? Randy Posh. But it was a very well done video. I imagine most of you who are in the UNIV 101 uh, experience have seen it. But there are some things that you said in there that I agree with tremendously, and there are some things in there I'll disagree with, but this is not the time to really pick bones about stuff like that. 
But one of the things that he did in organizing his talk is he talked first of all about um, his childhood dreams, uh, helping other people accomplish their childhood dreams, and the lessons he'd learned as a result of his experience. One of the things that I took away from the last nine months were some of the lessons that I learned, not just about myself and my family, but about Kevin uh, as an individual. He's a 21-year-old. I've lived with him his whole life. But it's amazing how you never really know your kids until you see them as adults uh, interacting with the world and how they handle some of the things that they have to deal with. Uh, just to give you an example, when Kevin first found out he was sick, uh, he was on his way to the hospital and when he came back from the clinic and they called and said his blood counts were extremely low, that we need to take him to the emergency room right away. The first thing he did, which is the way he handles a lot of things in his life, was he got on the internet. And he started doing searches to find out as much as he could. And before he left the house, Diane was taking him to the emergency room. I was staying home with our other two kids, Kirti and Pooja. He came to me on his way out the door and he said, don't tell mom, but I've looked uh, up a lot of information and I think it might be leukemia. Now, that's a very profound thing for uh, a young adult to learn, but to have the presence of mind and the concern for somebody else in the face of what he was going to be dealing with, to be worried more about how his mom was going to react than about how it was going to affect his life, indicated to me that he was a much more mature and, in some cases, a bigger man than I was, which is a, a difficult lesson <laughs> to learn. Anyway. One of the other things that I learned about Kevin was he can write. I, in reading his blog, uh, which I had to do pretty much on a daily basis for uh, the next month, he was up in the University of Wisconsin Madison Hospital with Diane while I was here in DeKalb with our other two kids. Uh, I found out what was going on in their lives through his blog and the blog that Diane was keeping. And I was struck by how articulate uh, he was, as a writer, he's a very gifted writer, and his perspective on the things that he was experiencing, the humor that he brought to his, uh, his, his story, the attitude that he had with regards to everything he was having to endure was just amazing. But we came up with this idea of top ten list, what's really important in life, from two different perspectives. Uh, and one of the things that prompted this was uh, a movie that we saw when we were when he was in the University of Chicago getting ready for his bone marrow transplant. How many of you have seen The Bucket List? Okay, in retrospect, this seems like an awful macabre thing to do when you've got uh, what could be a potentially terminal illness is to watch a movie about two individuals that are of terminal cancer. But we all watched it as as a as a family, and it's a tremendous movie. But in looking at the two lists that these individuals, uh, Jack Nicholson and um, uh, Morgan Freeman, came up with, one of the first things that Morgan Freeman started to do was write down a list, and it started with, do a kindness for a stranger, or something like that. And Jack Nicholson saw this list, and he says, you're nuts. You've got so much time to live. You've got to really experience life. But what struck me was at the end of the movie, it was actually Morgan Freeman's list that was more important. Jack Nicholson started looking back on his life and trying to think of the things that he could do that would be more meaningful. You can travel, you can go to the Taj Mahal, you can go to the pyramids in Egypt. But at the end of the day, that's not what's going to make a difference in how you feel about the quality of your life and the experiences that you've had. So how I came up with my list, first of all, I looked at the priorities and whether or not this experience has changed what my priorities are. And I don't think my priorities have changed, but what has happened as a result of this whole experience is that it has crystallized my priorities so that I feel more strongly about the importance of actually keeping those priorities in mind as I live my day-to-day -day life. 